Yeah, it doesn't get any bigger than this for our company. It's the production launch of the F-150, groundbreaking new truck. I'm so happy for all the employees, all of our dealers, and most importantly, getting these trucks in the hands of our customers. Big question, because you have the aluminum panels now, you've retooled this plant, you're retooling the Kansas City plant. The early question is, will it be a clean launch? What are you seeing so far in terms of your scrappage rate and where the vehicle is? We are absolutely where we expect it to be on the launch. It's going smoothly. You can see the trucks rolling down the line here. Uh, we've had a lot of innovation in this plant. I mean, innovation around 500 new robots, new joining technologies, complete what we call closed cycle recycling. So every piece of scrap of the aluminum here gets recycled. Is it going faster than you thought it would in terms of the curve, the learning curve? Actually, the installation of the body shop went a lot smoother than I expected. And we're exactly where we expect it to be on that ramp up curve of production. So we're right where we want it to be. We get fuel economy standards for this vehicle within the next couple of weeks, by the end of the month. And everybody's saying it could be up in the 28, 29 miles per gallon highway. Um, is that still going to be a difference maker as fuel prices have dropped, the gas prices have dropped? Is the fuel economy still a difference maker? Well, first and foremost, what you get by uh, having 700 pounds out of the vehicle is more capability. That's what the truck customers want. They want more payload, they want more tolling, and they want more fuel efficiency. Phil, if you go back 20 years, the, the biggest customer uh, unmet need is fuel efficiency. So even at a buck fifty a gallon 20 years ago, that's what customers told us. And even today, we did research, it's the biggest dissatisfier. So when you combine the capability and the fuel efficiency of this new F-150, we think it's going to do real well. Let's transition into large SUVs because we're seeing the demand is there as much as it ever has been. We know that people back away from large SUVs when gas prices spike. What happens as they're falling right now when it's below $3 a gallon? Does it bring people back into the large SUV? Well, I think the thing that brings people back into the show, or particularly on large SUVs, is new product. We're just launching our new Expedition and our new Lincoln Navigator, so that's bringing folks into our showroom. But I think customers are really, they're much smarter these days. They know that just as fast as oil prices can go up, they can go down. So in every vehicle they want, when we look across segments, they want good fuel economy. So, you know, you'll see some migration as, as prices go up and down, but I, I think customers are a lot smarter these days. Obviously, you can't forecast where gas is going to be 12 months or 18 months from now. But you do look ahead in terms of your own planning. Right. If somebody said to you, where do you think gas prices will be a year from now, what would you say? Well, it's a it crystal ball. You know, our view, our long-term view is over time, the price of a barrel of oil is going to continue to go up. It's a non-renewable resource. Now, we've seen more availability here in the U.S. through fracking, et cetera, which has changed the supply and demand dynamics. But over time, we expect the price of fuel to continue to go up, but it'll go through peaks and valleys.